Hello, my name is Vahid Chitsos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being here. Go ahead, introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Hi, I'm from my, I'm coming from Miami. Um, my name is Christine Handy, Christine Handy One on Instagram. And I am the author of the book, Walk Beside Me. And I am a motivational speaker, and I speak about a lot of different issues. Um, one is self-esteem and self-worth and just uh, motivating people and women. And it's what I love to do. So it's an honor to be here. Thanks for joining. Awesome. I saw, I saw, the, I saw that the, the rating on the Kindle was really, really high on the oh, book. So walk us through. What does the title mean? So Walk Beside Me, I um, was a model. I started modeling when I was very young. And my identity over the course of my modeling for 25 years was really wrapped up into what I look like. And um, then I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had a couple other illnesses uh, that kind of, um, you know, I was all scarred up and I lost my hair and I lost what I thought was my identity. Um, but I had a mountain of people, family and friends that stood by me during that really difficult time. And, um, and so that's, that's the reason why it's called Walk Beside Me because it was during that time that I realized that, you know, we have to have a community of people that walk through life with us. We, we can't do it alone. Um, my faith and my friends have really got me through it. Um, and my book is really about the transformation of who I was back then to who I am now, which in, in that stage of my life, I was, I lived a very, oops, sorry. I lived a very no. transactional life. Um, you know, you do this for me, I do this for you, that kind of life. And I, I don't live that way anymore. I live a very um, serving life and I, I do what I can to help other women and other people. And through my book, um, that's helped so many, but just in my day-to-day -day life, you know, I search for ways to help other people. And the minute I walk out my door, I'm trying to lift people up and cheerlead for people. And even inside my door um, with my own kids, but also with myself, it's so important to cheerlead for yourself um, and not depend on other people to do that for us. So that's, it's kind that's of my awesome. journey. Yeah. So you said you, you did that for 25. So you're like 32 years old right now. Is that what's going oh, on? Oh, yes. Big kiss. <laughs> Wow, I love you. So, so tell <laughs> no, me this. No, I did it for 25 I, years. I started when I was 11 years old. Wow. So, yeah. okay, so now I'm going to take this up. This is, this is fantastic. What are the two hardest things to do as a model? The two hardest things to do? Yes. As a model or a mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we'll both. do both. We'll do both. <laughs> but um, let's start with model first. Uh, the hardest thing to do as a model was... Um, that's a very good question. I've never been asked that. Um, for me, the hardest thing was to maintain everything. So you had to maintain your weight. You had to maintain your, your whole physical features every, at every, every day. Um, and that's hard. You know, you, I, if I got scraped up, because I'm an athlete and I love to work out, and if I got a little scratch, you know, I'd, I'd have to go to my shoot or my booking, we, we called it, modeling shoots. And I'd, I'd be worried, you know, that they'd send me home because I had a bruise on my arm or, you know, my hair wasn't colored right. And we got weighed in oftentimes. And so that was, that was the hardest thing for me. You had to look exactly what your picture looked like. And we didn't have, uh, we didn't have filters back then. You know, I started, I mean, I'm 49. So I started a long time ago. So uh, that was the hardest thing. The hardest, well, yeah. Um, because a lot of people, Christine, a lot of people see the, 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 how do I say? They see the background, they see the scenery, they see the ocean, they see the yacht, they see the boat, they see the airplane, all these models. You know, they're modeling. That's the kind of background you want to have for most of these models. But then I think there's a whole, there's a whole sector of our society that doesn't know that it's a lot more than just looking good and being, having fun outside. It's not just all fun. You're literally showing up to work. It's not, it's not fun all the time. It wasn't that fun. Um, it, it was a lot of work and, um, you know, showing up on time made a big difference in that community, uh, in that profession. Cause a lot of women didn't. And so I, my longevity of work, I, I was able to work for so long because I was on time because I didn't get involved with any of the photographers because I didn't get involved with any drugs. And I was, I worked because that was my career. That was my job. And I did it really well. And, and so that's why I was successful at it. Um, but I was, I mean, I was a working model. I wasn't a, a, a top model. I was, I was in catalogs. I was on billboards. I was in the newspaper. I was on commercials. I was a working model. Um, and I made a great career out of it, but it, it was not, I wouldn't say it was fun. 
<laughs> but that's what I, that's what everybody sees. So let me ask you the other question. Follow up. So what are the hardest things to do as a mother? As a mother. So I mean, I can tell you, as a dad, the hardest thing is changing those diapers, and that's like that is like tough thing, man. I I rather do labor work. I rather you send me to construction zone and have me work for eight hours. But changing diapers is just not my thing. But you tell me from your side. Uh, from my perspective, I have two boys, and I think. Every stage, I, I thought, well, this is the hardest stage. And I was so wrong. Like, right now, my, I have children, two boys that are 21 and 18. This is the hardest stage because of everything that they're exposed to. And you want to protect them like they're two years old, right? I still want to carry my children around with me like they're two. And you can't. And the whole world, like, what I, what I went through, the whole world is going to hurt you. I mean, people are going to hurt you. You can't, have your, you can't put your faith in things, and you can't put your faith in people. So I want to protect my children, protect my cubs, but we can't. And they have access to so much like this. Like what you and I are doing is such a positive thing, but we're in the minority. And so I, I really, it's, it's difficult right now at this stage, I think. I agree with that 100%. What they're exposed to, I don't even think my mom and my dad were exposed to, to the, in their entire life. No what my children are going to be exposed in one year. So it's just like, it's especially with the internet. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. He's got his own pros and cons. So me and my wife, we argue about it all the time. Right. We have different views on how to raise children. But she has the last say in most of the things. So I try to think I have the last say, but right. she has the last say in many, many things. So that's how it is. So tell me this. If I read your book. Yes. And I, I spent two, three hours okay. go through it. What would be, give me the summary. Um, it really is a literal, it's, it's a fictional depiction of my life. So it starts off, I was, it actually starts off when I was diagnosed with cancer, but then it goes back. And it's the journey from being um, literally wrapped up into things, um, what people, and the identity of everything was external. Um, when I woke up in, in, the, in the morning, it was like, what am I going to, what can I buy? What can I consume? What party can I go to? What charity event should I go to? And, and when I was diagnosed with cancer and had a, a couple other illnesses, that meant nothing to me. There is no U-Haul behind the hearse. If everybody understood that, tomorrow is promised to no one. If we all understood that, we would live different lives. Um, and, and so for me, it became, who was I? And what was my identity? And I didn't want my identity in that stuff. That was fleeting. That stuff was never going to satisfy me. And by the way, it wasn't satisfying me. Inside, I wasn't feeling empowered. I wasn't feeling joy. And now, after cancer, I wrote this book, and I've been helping and serving and, and, and changing lives. Man, this is, I feel joy now. Not because it's, it's not about me. It's not about this shell. It's about what we can do for other people and how we can serve. That's what matters to me. And honest to God, that's the only joy I've truly ever felt in my life. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. How much would you say mindset has to do with individuals getting that fulfillment and sometimes the result is monetary where you make money you get a lot of book sales gigs this you go to different tours you do public speaking a lot of different professions that you know i obviously we're not going to list everything but right what, how much your mindset had to do with you going through cancer and making it this far because it doesn't seem like you went through cancer if you wouldn't have told me i would right. have not known because you're motivated, you're pumped up, you want to you wanna serve others. You, you, right. It seems like you're very, very close to your family. So yeah. how much mindset relates to that? 100%. 100%. Because I could have taken a different shift, right? I could have taken all that pain. And I've had 18 non-elective surgeries in the last 10 years. I've gone through 28 rounds of chemo. I had no hair. I was 98 pounds. I didn't look like anything that, you know, I, I was a guest model. I didn't look like that anymore. And I, I could have been bitter and I could have been angry at the world and I could have gone a completely different route. And it was through prayer petition and, and people standing up for me that I learned, right, the power of that, like the power of the community standing up for somebody. I wouldn't be here without the people that stood up for me and shored me through this disease. And so I, I took that very seriously. And I said, and they said, when you're done with this, you, there is a real purpose for all of your pain. And when you're finished with this, then our job is complete. And now you go ahead and do it for and move it forward in which I've done. And I take that very seriously, but it was a complete mindset. It was only my mindset. 
Now they taught me to do that. And I, I was a good, uh, I was a good student, but if I, if my, if they hadn't taught me that, then I maybe have, would have gone down another road. I would have quit maybe, or I would have, I certainly wouldn't have given back to the world what I've, I mean, I've made a footprint in this world, but that was a choice that I made with the pain and suffering that I went through. It's a total mindset. So how important do you think it is to have a mastermind group or have positive environment? And I go back to this all the time and I share it as much as I can that most of us, we don't get to fulfill our lives to the maximum potential because of our surroundings. And you were, you're part of the minority being lucky that all those people Fair. stood for you. And because Fair. I know so many, so many individuals, entrepreneurs, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people where literally their wives and girlfriends and boyfriends don't even believe that they're worth anything. And Absolutely. that's the toxic environment they're living in on daily basis. And they still got to pump themselves up internally and show up to work or show up to their business and try to get things going. That surrounding is very important. So, if somebody's out there and want to change their surrounding, what yeah. would be some of your suggestions? Well, I mean, I think the world, I think the world we live in um, has a responsibility to shore each other up, but it doesn't, like you said, it's not, is that realistic? Maybe not, especially not for everybody. So yeah, these types of environments, these mastermind classes, these mastermind groups, they're crucial to some people's well-being. And, and, and listen, suicide is on the rise. Why do you think that is? People are alone. People feel very lonely. People feel like forsaken, right? You, you get these groups together and people will flourish. Their lives will change. It's that important. I agree with that 100%. So let me ask you a question. Um, empowerment for, for females and, and all of the entrepreneurs that we got. I, I noticed that that is on rise. I see a lot of female coaches, entrepreneurs coming up, and I love their content. They're coming up with a new perspective, new views, and it's completely revolutionizing the whole entire industry as far as that aspect goes. But tell me some of the stuff that you think uh, female entrepreneurs need to watch out for. What are some of the stuff that people don't talk about? I want to talk about those things. Um, I think people are really afraid to be vulnerable. And if you do read my book, which I know you will, it's I'm very vulnerable. Like I put myself out there, not just the good stuff, but all the really bad stuff, you know, the bad qualities and the things that I really struggled with. And I think that's why my book has been very popular. I think when we become vulnerable in front of other people, people trust us. And, and I'm, not, I'm not out there trying to promote Christine Handy. I'm out there trying to promote Christine Handy so that people can listen to my message because it, it's important. Women's self-esteem gets completely shattered in this environment every day. Not just young women, but adult women. Men get shattered. How many likes do I have? How many comments do I have? I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, sometimes it just takes somebody to listen, right? Sometimes it just takes somebody to listen to a podcast and, and, and to have their mind shift. So I, I don't, you know, there's a lot of things that I try to teach, but self-esteem is one of them because it's a daily practice. For me, I work on it every day. And there's tools that I talk about, you know, you self-affirmations and, and find women or find men around you that, can lift you up and and if you have people in your life that are tearing you apart man get rid of them get rid of them fast because that will change your life the people the voices that you listen to that that is who you are so find some voices that are positive find some voices that have some solutions for you i know and, and i've been i've been preaching about that constantly where sometimes um sometimes you got to cut the leg to save you the really body. Do. Stop. In a polite way. But you really yeah, do. You do. And, and these are the people that you love and yeah. you trust. But, I mean. For some people, they're family members. For some people, they're family. Exactly. So, the person that is is my best friend for 10 years that I trust, I might trust my house with them when I go out of town. But I shouldn't trust their business opinion because they're not in business themselves. So you also got to watch out who you're getting advice from. Is right. Do you want to be in their position in five years, 10 years? And if not, then you, you, you just, their opinion is just their opinion. It has nothing to do with you. So sometimes you just got to, I don't know, sometimes you just got to pack your shit up and just move out. Sometimes that's what you got to do to get into the positive environment. But yeah, you also have I, I also know it's not easy. Yeah, it's not that easy. It's not. But it's you also have to watch people who are, who celebrate your success um, or who are just there during your failures, right? 
it's, it, it thins out, right? Because people think they're in competition. Like, I mean, you and I aren't in competition, but just let's say we were. There, there's no competition between us. There's room for everybody. There's no ceiling. There are, there are so many opportunities for speakers and for books and for authors. And, and it's when people get wrapped up into this, well, maybe they have more opportunity or maybe they are more successful because of this and they tear each other apart. There's no reason. We should shore everybody up because there's no ceiling. I agree with that, 100%. Especially in this field, especially in self-development, yes. I mean, there is no cap. You could no you cap. could work on yourself all day long, 24-7, until the day you die. So you, there's no definitely cap. But Christine, I love these questions. I definitely want to take this opportunity and, and definitely have my team reach out to you again. There, there's so many topics, and I like to take a we look at the book. Forever. So I can, I can, I can read, I can ask more questions about the book, but go ahead and tell us how can we, where can we find the book and give us the title one more time. So if in case anybody wants to go and find it on Amazon. Yeah, it is on Amazon. I, I think that's where everything is, right? Um, it's called Walk Beside Me by Christine Handy. And um, my website is christinehandy.com. And my Instagram is christinehandy1. So it is a good book. People like it. And it's actually being made into a film. So look for the film. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking Thank this you. time out of your busy day. Looking forward to doing more with you. Awesome. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.